Okay, so just like you do with a complex fraction, you want to make it so that it's not complex anymore by multiplying by the LCD over one, right? The same thing goes for equations. If you want to make them not complex or not complicated with fractions, you can change it by multiplying by the LCD over one. Now, I know some of you have done these topics in Alex already. Because you don't have just one fraction equal to one fraction anymore. You have an extra term, okay? So I, again, I don't like teaching things that only work in certain cases. I like to teach you a strategy that works for all fraction equations, okay? And even in the linear equations, we were still doing it. It just wasn't as complicated because there weren't variables downstairs. It was always just numbers downstairs, right? Now, it's the same idea. Multiply every term by the LCD over 1, and then the fractions go away. So, looking at these two fractions, what's the common denominator here? X times X plus 4. You got it. X times X plus 4. And multiply it to both. And so what happens is the X is wipe. Those go... And what I have left is this negative 10 times this factor and a negative 18 times x. Everything's over 1, so there's no more fractions anymore. Okay? And then now this is just a regular linear equation. So distribute your 10, negative 10. And then what do you want to do from there to solve for x? Uh, move the 40 over. You want to move this one? Plus so plus 40. Now what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. Oops. Oh, my brain does that sometimes. Yes, divide by 8. So I'm trying to squish it in there, but <laughs> x equals 5. The only thing is, is because you have x's in the denominator, you have to check your answers. And you don't have to check the whole thing. All you have to do is make sure that this number doesn't make a fraction undefined. So just make sure that this answer doesn't make any of your bottoms zero. Okay? So if I plug 5 into this, it's just 5, right? Yeah. It's not a zero. So that's good. If I plug this 5 in here, it's going to be 9, which is, again is not zero. So it's good. Okay? That's all you want to do is make sure that this is not a bad answer. Um, if it's bad, it's because it made one of the denominators zero, which means you could have done your math to completely correct. And there's a fancy word for numbers that do that. Like if I do all my steps correct and I figure out that x equals 5, but then I go to plug it back into my denominator, it makes them undefined. Those are called extraneous solutions. So they are solutions. It's just they don't check out. Okay. Eventually, when we get to college algebra, you'll learn why they don't check out. There's actually some weird stuff going on on the graph on these guys, okay? But it doesn't mean that your math was wrong, okay? It just means it's one of those weird ones that you did everything correctly and it just still doesn't work, okay? My high school teacher told us to think about, like, when you go to the grocery store and you buy a carton of eggs. They're fine, <laughs> you know, when you look inside the carton before you buy them, and you're very careful when you go home, but sometimes when you crack that thing open, it's still bad, right? So you just don't know until you get to the end and you check it, okay? Now, the same thing with this next one. This isn't a fraction. I can make it one just by doing that, right? What's the common denominator here? 1u. Mm -hmm. So just multiply by u over 1, u over 1, the u's knock out. I end up with just negative 4, and over here I end up with what? And how do I solve for you? Mm -hmm. So those will wipe out, I get u, and then what do I get over here? 1 half. Exactly. And if I plug 1 half down there, it's just going to be 1 half. Is That's good, as long as it's not 0.
Yes, until you get to those, right? <laughs> they get crazier. There's that one there. They get weird. And then they're gonna remember I told you those distance rate problems? There it is, the cyclist or the airplane or the trains or whatever. But the chart gets a little bit more complicated in those problems. So we'll we'll get to them. But yes. That's why I told you, you want to be proficient in the old ones, because those are easier before you try to attack the harder one. Okay. Um what's the L C D here? Say over one, so you're gonna have uh, one times y plus seven, mm -hmm. or just y plus, y plus seven, seven, right? Yeah. Yep. But I'm gonna put it in parentheses. Mm -hmm. So then this will knock out that. Nothing's gonna cancel so there. That's a negative one. Negative one equal, equal to, to ne negative three times y plus seven. Mhm. Mm and so what do I do to solve that? Uh, bigger should be. To Mm -hmm. 3y minus 21. Mm -hmm. And then plus add 21. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't And if I plug it in here, it's not going to be zero. It's going to be some weird fraction, right? I just need to make sure it's not going to be zero. What is the common denominator on the next one? If it helps you, put that over one, right? You don't have three C. Three C. So just remember, there's three terms now. So these three C's over one, there needs to be three of them, right? So do three C over one here, three C over one there, and three C over one here. And just from now on, you're going to notice what I do. I'm always going to put my LCD over 1 to the right of my term. That's going to be important later to have that habit, okay? Especially when the negatives are involved. So always put your LCD from now on to the right. So here the 3s will cancel, and I'll have what? 5C. 5C. Here the Cs will cancel, and I'll have what? 12. 12. Here, nothing will cancel, yeah, but I'll have C. negative 3C. And so how do I solve that? Mm -hmm. I have 3C, yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus 8C yeah. equals 12 divided by 8. Mm -hmm. No, it reduces. Uh, so 6 over 3. No, 1 plus. over 2. Uh, 4. What? 3, Three over, over 4. 3 over, <laughs> over 2. Over two. <laughs> That's right, you're right. Yes, reduced by four. And is that that there's only one denominator with the letter in it, and that's C. So if this is not zero, that's not going to be zero. So this is good. All that's happening is that the denominator is going to start looking different and different and different and different. But the process is exactly the same. So what is the LCD for this one? 35W. Yes. So on the right, 35W over 1. On the right, 35W over 1. And eventually, I'm not going to be able to squeeze this stuff in here, so I'm going to have to rewrite eventually yep. when it gets bigger than 35 over w, 35W, right? So let's see. The 7, seven uh-huh, and then the W. Yeah, the W cancels out as well. So what do we end up with there for the first 10? 10. 10. Minus. Mm -hmm. The W, 5 cancels, and it's 35, so that's 7. The W cancels out. Mm -hmm. That's 21. 21. Equals 35W. Mm-hmm. So, so what should I do? Negative, negative 11 mm -hmm. equals 35W. Mm -hmm. Divide by 35. So negative 11 over 35. That can't go down anymore. Mm -hmm. And is that going to be a solution or is it going to be one of those extraneous solutions? Okay, so you're going to plug it back into W for that. Mm -hmm. And will I get zero if I multiply no, seven you, times this? You won't get zero. If I just, will I get zero if I do five no, times that? No. Nope. No, so it's won't. good. 
It looks like a four almost. Let me write it correctly. There. I'll let you try the next one. We'll talk it out if you know we're going to, but I'll let you try it just even though it looks a little bit different from the ones before. Just try it. Let's yeah, work right. it out. Let's work it out, right? He's right. Yeah. So here I don't have enough room yeah. to write V plus seven over one behind that, behind that, behind that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually rewrite everything. So I'm gonna say V over V minus seven times V minus seven over one. Then the minus four times v minus 7 over 1, then the equals 7 over v minus 7 times the v minus 7 over 1. So I just kind of stretched out what was in green, right, and wrote it in purple so that I could fit my LCD behind everything. Then, yes, these will reduce, these will reduce. So I have v minus 4 times this, and then just the 7. We distribute, we get negative 4v, positive 28. So that gives me negative 3v. And then you have to minus the 28, negative 21. And then divide by negative 3, you get 7. But since 7 makes the original denominator 0, this is one of those extraneous solutions. It's the only one I found, and it's bad, right? So you have to say no solution. Now, I want to mention something real quick because eventually today we're going to get into problems that have two answers, right? And one of them may be bad, but the other one may be good, okay? And so then you don't write no solution. You just give me the one that's good, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you only get one answer and it's bad, then yes, it's no solution. But if you get two answers, there's three possibilities I could have. Either both could be good, one could be good, the other one bad, and then you only have one answer, or both are bad, and then you have no solution. Okay? So keep that in mind because we will get to some later. Not yet. We've got quite a few of these first before we get to those. So here, it's the same stuff. It's just a problem because... This thing is not ready for me to identify what the LCD is. It's just not. And I know I'm going to have to stretch everything out and rewrite it later anyway. And instead of rewriting things twice, I'm just going to cross this out and factor it. How do you factor 4w minus 16? Uh, take out 4. Mm -hmm. It's going to be w minus 4. Mm -hmm. And now, you, now that the bottoms are all factored, this one doesn't even have a bottom, so just leave it alone. Um, now that you have everything factored, now you can tell me what the LCD is. So let me rewrite it, but I'm going to use this factored denominator. I'm going to leave myself some space. One, leave myself some space. This thing. And then, of course, I need some space over there, right? So what is the LCD then? Four times W minus four. Mm -hmm. So then both of these are going to cancel. Nothing cancels over here. And those guys cancel over there. So I'm left with just the negative 1. Plus Multiply the numbers. Uh -huh. What do you get? What do you get when you do 1 times 4? 4 oh, 4W. Oh, okay. You want to go ahead and break it down. Yeah. Just multiply the numbers yeah, together. And, do it. Okay. and then we'll distribute later. later. Okay. okay. Copy that. All right. And then here, those went away. So we just have negative, negative 12. 12. Again, just multiplying the numbers together, right? Okay. Now we can distribute. So we get positive 4w, but then we get negative 16. Positive times yeah, a negative. negative. Yeah. Yes, Minus 17. Good. And so if yeah, I add, add, yeah, add, it, add it. what will I get? Positive, positive, five. positive 5 and then if I divide five, by 4, four, five, four. Five or four. Yeah. and will that make the denominator 0 no no if as long as this w doesn't match that added. right it's not going to be as, as 0 and the same thing here if this doesn't match this this isn't going to be 0 if, what, doesn't match, yeah. if, if whatever I'm plugging in yeah. doesn't match what 
Minus him. If that came out to a positive four for the answer for W, would have been wrong. Right. If we had got positive four here, yeah. that would have been an extraneous one. Extraneous solution, yeah. I think in Alex, they train you to look at the denominators first and then solve and compare. I don't do that. I just solve it and then I go back and I look to see at the denominators. So I, I work a little bit backwards than what Alex does. Alex makes you go find the bad guys first. And then you solve it, and if your answer matches one of the bad guys, then they say, oh, this one doesn't work. <laughs> Me, I just plug them into all the bottoms, and if as long as it doesn't make it zero, you're good. Now I'm going to skip this one. We'll come back to it, okay? But it's kind of a little bit separate from what I'm doing, which is solving the rational equations. This is not exactly the same thing. So I'm going to skip it for now, but we will have to come back to it, okay? I'm going to skip the word problems as well for now. I'm going to get back to some more equations, okay? So here, it's the same thing. This is okay. It's, it can't be factored. This is okay. It can't be factored. But this can be factored. And I have to if I want to figure out what the LCD is. So V plus 2 or V plus 3, V minus 3, yes. So then let me rewrite what's in green, but spread it out so I have some room. And I'm gonna use the factored version of that other denominator. So I'm like rewriting it and spreading it out, right? So what is the LCD then? B plus three, B minus three. Mm -hmm. And some people can do what I'm doing visually in their head. Yeah, I just, I'm just doing it right now. yeah, they just know what the next step is gonna be. And that's okay. I, however, write it out, especially because I'm recording it for teaching purposes, right? We want to be able to see everything. But normally, when you look at this, you can say, well, if both of them are my factors, those are going to cancel. I'm just going to end up with one times the other guy, right? And then here, that one will cancel, and I'll end up with four times the other guy. Here, both of them will cancel, and I'll just end up with the one. So you, normally, you just go into the next step. I'm just actually writing it out so we can see it happening, okay? So this is more of just so you can see it, but some people do this mentally, mental math, right? All in your head. So you end up with one times this guy, four, mm-hmm, and just one. So one V plus three? Mm-hmm. Four V plus four V minus 12? Mm-hmm. So four V equals one, I mean V equals negative seven. Five V? Mm-hmm. Minus eight, nine. Nine. Right, and is two going to give me zero in any of the bottoms? No, no. it's going to give me negative negative one, one, five, five and then maybe negative five, yep. right? But they're not zero, so that's all we care about. This one's good. Uh, here we start. We start getting into the ones with two answers. Notice how all the topics, I haven't pointed it out, but they've been saying solve a rational equation that simplifies to linear, okay? Which meant I could solve it like a linear equation. This one too, right? Too linear. Um, that one was different. The other one said too linear, too linear. Too linear, too linear. Now look what, what it says now. Skip the couple. This one simplifies to quadratic. quadratic, which means I could get two answers. Okay. So we do it the same, it's just when I'm done, it's gonna look a little bit, it's not gonna look like a line. Okay. So what's the common denominator here? W. And I can a w so w over 1 w over 1 and w over 1 those will knock out but what will i get when i multiply those 1w squared oh. 1w squared yes and then minus 6, six. Yep. and then over minus here 10, or just 10 just 10 just 10 and so then i can add 6 and you can one of two ways i'm going to do this problem twice because there's two different ways to do the problem, okay? 
I would get W squared equal to 16. 16. And then what's the opposite of a square? What undoes a square? Does anybody know? Square root. Square root. So, oh. But if you put so you in a square root, cut, right? yeah. if you put a square root in the problem, you automatically get two answers. So you're going to have a plus 4 and a minus 4. So you have positive 4 and minus 4. There's another way to get both of those answers without having to remember the plus or minus. And that is, if I see a square, normally when we see squares, we're supposed to make it equal 0. And yeah, then so factor, gonna, yeah, right? Say w so if I minus 10 to make it 0, yeah. I have this. And if I factor that, w plus 4 and w minus 4. Mm -hmm. yeah, so and then if I set each one equal to 0, yeah. don't I get the same yeah. two answers, yeah. right? And this is the way you're supposed to do it. But we just noticed that the only letter we had was W, so we went ahead and did it this way. Either way, it's fine, okay? The only time you can't do it like this is if you have W squared and then minus W, and then minus 6, right? Then you have to factor it, okay? Because then you have a trinomial, and trinomials have to be factored. Okay. Try that one. Let's see what happens. I'm going to freeze the screen so I can try it, and then we'll talk it out. Equals the negative 4 times x plus 2. No, I don't have 10x anywhere. So let's see what happened. How come you don't? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Now, there's stuff in here I didn't write. So even though it's it looks like a lot, but there's more in there that I could have written. Oh, okay. I did it wrong. So here you've got these things, right? And then I ended up with... The LCD was x plus 3, x plus 2, so the x plus 3 is canceled. Here there was nothing to cancel, so they're both still there. And here the x plus 2 is canceled, so I still have plus 3 times x plus 3. So we went ahead and distributed the numbers, but remember, you've got three things that are multiplied here. So yes, you can multiply the first two, but that result still has to get multiplied by this. Okay? So that's why when I found the result, I put it parentheses because that entire thing still has to get multiplied by x plus 2 okay so we got negative 4 we get negative 12 but then this whole quantity has to get multiplied to the x plus 2 okay so then here we distributed we got negative 5x we get negative 10 here we distributed, we got 3x and positive 9. But now I'm going to distribute this. So I just rewrote those two terms and I just rewrote those two. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times positive 2 is negative 8x. Negative 12 times x, negative 12 Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. I went ahead and combined a lot of the like terms over here. So just to look smaller for me in my brain, right? So negative 4x squared is the only x squared term, but then I have negative 8, negative 12, that makes negative 20, yeah. plus 3 makes negative 17. Right. Then I have negative 24 and positive 9, which made negative 15. Now, I have a square, and I have a bunch of x's, so I have to get it equal to 0. I don't like my x squared guy negative, so I move these three terms to the left, so that way I can get it equal to 0. Now, when I move this one, it became positive 4x squared, right? When I move this one, it becomes positive 17, but minus 5 yeah. gives me positive 12x. Right. And then when I move this one over, it becomes positive 15, but minus 10, minus 10 right. is positive 5. Right. Right. Then this, I'm so supposed to factor. So I did 4 times 5, which was 20, and I figured out that 2 and 10 multiplies to give me 20, but also adds to give me 12, okay? Right. What I didn't write in there is the whole factoring process, right, right, right. okay? But what you're supposed to be doing, let me put it in another color so it doesn't look like part of the problem, is you're supposed to be doing 4x squared plus 2x plus 10x plus 5, right? Chop it in half. Those guys yeah. have 2x in yeah. common. And then I get 1. Those have 5 in common. I get 2x, 2x plus, plus 1. Yeah. So I get 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 5. I just didn't write that in there, okay? But then now I know what this looks like factored, so it looks like this equals 0, right? And then when I set this equal to 0, I would have to minus the 1 over, making it negative 1, and then I would have to divide by that 2, making it negative 1 half. Over here, I would have to minus the 5 over, right? And then I would have to eventually divide by the 2. So I get these two things, and the only reason I box 
cross them is because they're fractions. So when I try to add 3, I'm not going to get 0. When I try to add 2, I'm not going to get 0 for either one of them. So they're both good. I have two solutions. Okay? It, and it was probably here, right? It was right there on a negative 5x plus 2. I said to me... You put a 10x? 10x oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, good. So this one was, was a big one. Yes. Now here, this one also is going to simplify to a quadratic somehow. Oh, I see how. Um, what is the common denominator here, though? U plus 6 and U minus 6. Okay, now let's see if we can do the visual part, this part, without having to write it down. Okay, okay? so if you put U plus 6, U minus 6, so you know that U plus 6 is going to cancel out, and at the top, you should have U plus 7 and U minus 7. Not U minus 7. I mean, U minus 6. U minus 6. Because yeah, okay. you're multiplying by both right, of these. Right, right. This one cancels, but yeah. you still have that one left, right? Yeah. When we get to this term, what happens? Is this going to be negative U plus 6 and U minus 6? Mm -hmm. And it's going to equal to U minus 1 times U plus 6. Yes. Good. So you're seeing both of them and then which one's canceling and what you're left with, right? right. Now here we just have a bunch of multiplying to do. So we get u squared, 6u, 7u, and then 42. Here, remember this negative is going to multiply. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to do the, this part first, okay? I get u squared minus 6u, and then minus 36. Here. u squared, what's it, 6u minus 1u plus minus 6u. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so negative five should be minus six. Minus six. six. Yes. So then I'm not done with my multiplying. Let me do that first before I start trying to combine things together. So that's gonna make it negative u squared. That's gonna make negative it positive. Five, six, negative six, six u and then positive. positive. Yep. Yeah. And then leave all those guys alone. So now I'm gonna combine this side first I have u squared minus u squared what happens mm -hmm. we have negative 6u plus 6u that cancels out. Mm -hmm. we have 7u minus 6u 1u and then we have negative 42 and positive 36 negative 6, negative six. over here we have u squared then that's positive 5u yep. and minus, minus 6, six. So we still have a square, which means we have to get it equal to zero. But my square is positive over here. I want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move these two guys over there. Okay. So I'm going to end up minusing u and adding 6, right? So now we get the zero like we want, but we have u squared, positive 4u, four four and, and those go away. Yeah, yeah. they cancel. Whoa. So you have u in common? Uh-huh. So I'm going to jump over here. I have u in common, you got it? u plus 4. Yep. 4, right? I'm only factoring out the u. Yes, ma'am. So then I get u equals 0, u plus 4 equals 0, and u equals negative 4. Now check your answers. Hold on, hold on, Ms. Lopez. Go ahead. We do something, right? Sure. You got first line, you did, right? Come this back, one? come go up, go up to the next line. This up, one? Go up one more. Yeah. That line, you did that first half, right? This half? Yeah. What uh -huh. about this other half on the other side? This side? side? Yeah. U squared stayed. 6u minus u oh, is 5u. Oh, you that and then minus right. 6, okay, right? Sure, we did sure. That. sure. Right, copy that. So we got 0 and negative 4. If I plug 0 here and here, do I get any zeros after? No. If I plug negative 4 here or negative 4 there, do I get any zeros after? 2 and 10. Yeah, so they're okay. So then I get two answers. 0 and 4 both work. It's just they start getting really long, right? Those quadratic ones really get long. It's all the multiplying. And I know I did this one. I don't know why I did it, because I normally don't ever do that. I think I just saw, oh, I'm going to distribute, and oh, I'm going to distribute. So I said, well, okay, well, I'm going to distribute this one too. But normally when I have three guys like that, I like to multiply the binomials together first, and then distribute the number in the front. And over here I did it, 
right? We multiplied those two guys first, and then we distributed yeah, the numbers. negative, okay, yeah. right? right? Which is normally what I do. I don't know why I did it the other way okay. before, okay? Okay, let's see. I think this is the last one, two more of the equations, and then we'll stop this video and go do the like couple word problems that there are. There's really only two word problems and then like two algebra problems. What should be the first thing you try to do here? You're going to factor out. Yep. You're going to factor out your y squared minus y minus 20. So you should have a, a y plus 5, y minus 4. Or y minus 5, y plus 4. Mm hmm. Yeah. And that's going to be your common denominator. Mm hmm. So then both will wipe out here, leaving yeah, me with 6y. Yeah, leaving you 6y, your, your y plus 4 will be left up there. Mm -hmm. And then your y, plus, y minus 5 will be left up there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have 6y mm -hmm. minus 2y mm -hmm. minus 8 mm -hmm. equals y squared minus 5y. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to have 4y minus 8 equals y squared minus 5. 5y. So, mm -hmm. Minus y, I mean, so you can, uh, if I was doing that, I'd probably, I'd probably move the negative, I'd probably add 5y to both sides. Why? Because that y squared, some, it's just telling me I got to do something with it. Y squared different. means you're going to have to get it equal to zero? Yeah. The whole thing. Either this side's going to have to go away or that side's going to have to go away. But how do you decide which one? Do How do I decide whether I'm going to move these two guys over here? Or whether I'm going to move these two guys over there. Should it matter? It, well, it will be more complicated if you do it one way versus the other way. One way is easier and the other way is harder. Uh, but okay, how do we so know? Would, if, how I do we know? Because you have the y squared in the front, uh -huh. I would move the 4y minus 8 over. Yes, because so the y squared is positive. positive. Yeah, you yeah. always want your y squared term positive. Yeah. If it is, leave it where it is. If it's negative, that's when you move them over, okay. okay? So this guy is good the way he is, so we're gonna leave him there, meaning these guys you said have to move over there. So those are the ones that are gonna move. So now I have zero over here on that side. All right, and I got y squared minus nine y plus eight. Mm-hmm, and how do you do that? Y squared uh, plus eight, I mean minus, let me think about it, I need a positive eight. So y minus squared eight, my, uh, plus one. Uh, no, it's what? gonna be minus. It's gonna minus be minus minus one. There you go. Minus what? Minus eight minus one. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's, that's a positive eight at the end. end. You're right. You're right. right. So y equals positive eight, and y equals positive one. And then check at the top. Use the factored version when you check. It's easier. If I plug in 8 here and here, do I get 0? No, ma'am. If I plug in 8 here or here, do I get 0? No, ma'am. If I plug 1 in here and here, do I get 0? No, ma'am. And over there either, right? So two answers. 8 and 1. <laughs> I'm going to pause the video, but... <laughs> so first things factor your bottom right so the middle factor is going to be x plus 4 x minus 4 mm -hmm. that's going to be our our greatest common factor mm -hmm. so what will you be left with here if you multiply by these two things here here and here you're going to have x times x minus 4 mm -hmm. and the next one you're going to have uh, 20. X, plus 20. X plus 20. And since it's okay, not multiplied sorry. by anything, I don't need to put you're it in parentheses. Minus, and then you're going to have 3 times X plus 4. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you're going to have X squared minus 4X mm -hmm. equals X plus 20 minus 3X minus 12. Mm -hmm. And then who am I going to move where? Uh, you're gonna move or should I actually combine first, right? I would combine. Combine. Yeah, yeah I would do that. Yeah. 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 
So negative 2x, positive 8. Does that look right? Uh, 20 and 12, yes, ma'am. Okay, and then am I moving these two guys to the right, or am I moving these two guys to the left? Right, he's positive, right? So move the other guys. So I get what? X squared minus 2x minus 8. Can we factor that? Yeah. Uh, minus 4 plus 2. Minus 4 plus 2. Mm -hmm. There you go. So then we get x equal to? 4. And? and negative 2. Mm -hmm. And then check. Yeah. Does 4 make any of these denominators 0? Yes. Yes. It does. Do. Yes, it, it makes does. that one that and that one, right? Yep. Yep. So, so this is a bad one. Yep. What about negative 2? No, it doesn't mess with nothing. So negative 2 is the only answer. Oh, okay. Woo. I'm ready to fry. <laughs> 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 they do this is to be fried. You know? <laughs> yeah, not good. Not you have to be careful because the longer the problems get, right, the more chances you are to make an error. <laughs> So that's what's tricky about these. Yeah, that, Derek, go ahead and ask that, bro. Say it again. Well, like, your career is based on, like, I mean, I mean, uh, your job is all this, right? Yes. Because you don't like it's, three hours. If you do it over and over and over and over and over exactly. and over, it's like nothing, yeah. But it's, I mean, Eventually. Still, you still and make, I still make errors. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you still make because I mean we'll we'll catch each other but yeah. you still make them and it's just like it's even too much you're doing jumbles it's just like you you you're bound to make a mistake yes like, you overload it's just that little symbol man right, some fire coming out of you uh, yeah you probably did bro I ain't lying man like, <laughs> shit, man. okay we have I'm gonna do another video I'm gonna stop this one because that's all of the equation stuff all right. okay.